Good morning, everyone. Happy September 1st. And uh, I just wanted to say the best part of going through a bunch of wheat scents, a nice bulk lot, is I get to talk about a lot of things that not only I see, but you see as well. And um, uh, there's always an explanation uh, for every single kind of like anomaly out there, whether it's a variety or maybe it's something that you think you see and, you know, it really isn't. Um, Sometimes it, it, the eyes can play tricks on us, and um, generally, if, if it's something that you're not sure of, and you think there's something there, and you need like 100 times magnification to help justify what you see, then it, it's it's nothing, you know, that to write home to mother about. Um, that's something that I have to preach and educate all of the... Uh, uh, the new students out there of the hobby and uh, sometimes it's kind of hard to get that point across uh seeing as how you know they, they want to be at the forefront of making a great discovery okay so for the longest time the poor man's double die was one such coin that have gone through many years of scrutiny is it a legitimate hub double die coin is it something else and um, it, it's been debunked a number of times, but a lot of folks are under the impression that coins of this nature are much more than it actually is. Okay, 1955 is the most common date for a poor man's double die. Okay, and again, all right, it, it's not the real deal. 1955 double die. It is completely night and day. Apples and oranges, two different coins. One is worth thousands of dollars. The other one is worth, well, maybe a gumball if you're lucky. But coins like this, so you see where you have the um, the shadow right here at the five. Okay, if I didn't have my pencil there, the focus would come in on it. Okay, that's what a poor man's double die is. Okay, this is that shadow. that That's really not anything okay other than a deteriorated die all right for those of you that aren't familiar with the uh, the minting process okay the the dies there's two of them okay there is a a hammer and an anvil die one will have the design of the reverse another will have the design of the obverse and these coins are struck off of both dies okay now let's say let's say for argument's sake, that the mint produces 100,000 coins. Uh, you, just like anything, it's like putting 100,000 miles on your car, okay? It's not going to run the same way at mile 1 or 10 as it would with 100,000 miles. Parts begin to break down. Um, you're going to have to do more maintenance on it. it you know, it's it dies for coining is much the same way. So deteriorated dies, okay, the, the dies, the, you know, the features, the devices will get smushy over time, and that therefore translates into a less than stellar strike, okay, and not only the dies, but the machinery too, okay, the machinery goes through a rigorous kind of uh, stressful environment, you know, the, the, uh, a mintage press will produce a million coins in one sitting, and you, you would it would be short-sighted to believe that even the machinery would go unscathed. But, you know, it's just like anything else. He, he, this is a different coin, by the way, as you can tell from the condition. Same thing. Um, why do people collect poor man's double die? Well, it's real simple. Okay, in a lot of albums, there are, there are slots for the leg legit... 1955 double die obverse number one okay the very coin that you see in a red book it's been highly publicized um again it's night and day <laughs> but people buy the um the poor man's double die issue to put in place because you know that coin can be prohibitively expensive okay most examples sell for a thousand dollars now this is a 1953 this one has a minor poor man's doubling 
deteriorated doubling. And it translates to any device and feature on the outside rim. So in God we trust, we'll have that as well. Uh, by the way, that uh, 53 has a really nice gnarly die crack that goes from the rim to Lincoln's head. And let me, let me see if I can show this to you, which again corroborates the, um, the wear and tear of the dies on these coins. And uh, there are a few dates that the um, supposed deteriorating doubling would happen. Okay, here's a 49. You notice that same feature right there. You see the nine where it's kind of shadowed there on the right side near the rim? Okay, that is another poor man's double die just on a different date. Okay, so they occur on a number of different dates. And um, again, they're really not worth anything. Uh, I, but however, it's crazy because um, 55 BU rolls in general are not cheap for the mere reason of the prospect of finding the real deal 55 double die. However, um, I've seen BU poor man's double die 55s sell for in excess of a hundred dollars. I just don't see the rhyme or reason. I think it's, it's purely, um, it, it's not a market uh, I would say, but you know, it's going to be one of those things that there's going to be enough, de uh, enough supply to fulfill the very little demand for them. And, uh, you know, you, once you get like two bidders trying to find a premium example of a, 55 poor man's um then that that's why you get the ramp up in price but i've also seen bu coins sell for five ten bucks you know and then you know it really depends on the alignment of the sun stars and moon i know it sounds ridiculous but if, you know if the conditions were right and you have like two people watching the same auction like on ebay or whatever the case wherever these coins are being sold then you know you get into a bidding battle and um these coins believe it or not, you know, sell for a good chunk of money. Um, but ideally you don't want to buy into the hype because if you spend a hundred dollars on a BU coin, you're going to have a hard time trying to turn that coin later on when you decide, Hey, you know what? Coin collecting is not for me. I need to sell these coins. Uh, a dealer will pay you 50 cents for that coin. Um, because they're going to see it as a, uh, a general BU 55 with a mushy strike. Yeah, it's real simple, but Anyways, it was fun talking about this. Sorry for the poor image quality. Uh, my camera is not really cooperating with me this morning, but you get the idea. You've seen a few examples, 55s, 53, 49. They occur generally in the 50s. Uh, as these dies break down, uh, you will get that, um, that deteriorating doubling, which is simply just the dies wearing and then the machinery with the loose parts and everything. Uh, these dies will sometimes do what they call hop. Okay, so it'll strike and then do a mini hop all the while striking the coin and then it produces kind of like this halo doubled effect um, which is not worth anything as far as a premium but I needed some time to kind of explain the overall process. Uh, man, I wish I had a pair of dies. Uh, <laughs> but to demonstrate with, uh, they're kind of hard to find. Um, not canceled. So uh, anyways, it was a pleasure talking to you this morning. Again, happy September. Uh, kind of feel the uh, coolness in the air. And um, please like, subscribe to Blue Ridge Silverhound uh, if you haven't done so already. And hit the bell for instant notifications. I appreciate your guys' time. Enjoy your weekend. Talk to you guys soon. Take care.